Ronnie Dale, four wheeling in Australia. We have a special episode of Modified. We are in New South Wales, Pebbly Beach, GQ Patrol. Yo, Danny. Here he comes. How you going, mate? How you doing? Good, Good morning. morning. <laughs> Welcome to New South Wales. Oh, cheers, mate. Sleeping, were you? Yeah, had a bit of a sleep in. Yeah. What time did we get to camp last night? Um, well, after midnight. <laughs> it it was, was a good night. <laughs> it was a good night. <laughs> GQ Patrol. Yes. What's it set up for? Set up for touring primarily, but it's a good play truck as well. It's definitely a good as, play truck. As you saw last night, yeah. 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 But sort of set up for, yeah, doing a bit of everything. So there's a bit of weight in this vehicle too, eh? It's not too bad, but it, it's probably almost at its um, DVM. But we built it sort of within the confines of keeping it all legal. It's a 96 GQ, nearly the last of them. It used to be a 2.8. You bombed it out. We made the... it a bit better. 6.5 Chevy diesel, it's got a turbo on it as well. No intercooler required as yet, because she runs really good the way it is. Uh, we'll get to that when we get to the motor. Yep. I reckon we get straight into the bar work. Bar work, bash plates, side rails, Rear bar, all that stuff. Only a bar. <laughs> front Only bar. a bar. <laughs> yeah, what, what have we got in the front of you? It's TJM. I thought it was a custom bar because it comes out yeah, like a no, point. Yeah, TJM made them like that because they're custom built for the um, high mount winch. That's pretty cool. This is what they make for a... Yeah. Yep. Wow. I didn't know you could get that. Yeah. You can mount a low mount in them, but they're suited for the high mount. That's why they come out that far and everything. High mount. Easier to service. Yes. A lot faster. Yes. How many pounds is this one? It's 8,500 pounds and it's running in cab controls as that's well. That's more than enough for, yeah. for this. Yeah. Do you have more rope on here than in a low mount? Yes. What do you got on here? 45 meters. Wow, that's a fair bit. Yeah, of, um, and it's thicker too, it's about 14 mil. Oh. So yeah, it fit a lot on the roll. So 45 meters, once fully spooled out, you've probably got, what, close to 40 meters yes. out? Yeah. As opposed to an, a conventional winch, You've only got... What, 30 is it? Yeah, 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 30, so you've got 25 yeah. if you're lucky out. Yeah, yeah, so it's a lot more. Mm. Real good for when you're rescuing other people. <laughs> <laughs> have you rescued yourself with this before? I have. You have? Yes. It's oh. also been um, modified to suit the body lift, so it still sits up nice and tight to the grill and everything. Oh, of the spaces? Yeah. Oh, no, it's all plated and welded in. And then oh, re drilled and yeah, so it's sitting up to, the, to suit the body lift. No bash plates, because I'm guessing you're so high anyway? Yes. Brush rails, you don't have rock sliders. I, was, I would expect to see rock <laughs> sliders on, on a beast like this. Yeah, I have thought about it, but we were just looking at the weight options with the vehicle and the fact that what, all the tracks I've already done everywhere we've been, we've never needed them. So we've just stuck with the standard ones. It's got enough clearance, got little kids I need to get in and out of the car. Rear bar. It's uh, full custom made. Pretty basic and straightforward, but it does the job. It's um, fully braced on the sides as well, back to the chassis, not just um, bent around the corner. Big mud flaps there to keep everything down and rocks from spitting out of the car behind you. Your rear bar is above my knees. Yeah. You've got loads of clearance, eh? <laughs> hey? Yeah. It's actually above your toe assembly as well. Yeah, it's, a, it's, the, it's still got a standard genuine um, patrol tow bar on it. And then we've just mounted the bar over the top of it. Do you recover off these? Yes, they're full recovery points. And we've done the quarter chop to fit the rear bar on as well. Cut off the bottom of the, um, the rear. And then it's got the swing away. Just at one side. We are looking at putting another one over there for um, carrying water, for doing the Simpson Desert later on this year. Is there another tire um, underneath? And there's no other tire underneath, no. So you carry five? Yeah. Oh, we, yeah, we just carry the one spare tire. If you did the Simpson, would you carry six? Um, probably not. We'll carry spare puncture repair kits and probably spare tubes. Um, that's, fine. That's, mm. that's fine, yeah. There's a roof rack up here. There is a roof rack up there. We're going to talk about it. Rhino rack, just with the aero bars. Not the heavy duty ones, because they work fine. Not something I'd expect to see on a, GU, a GQ Patrol lover. But it actually suits this one because of the colour, yes. I reckon. Yeah. With the silver. Yes. I have looked into the black racks and the flat ones, but this one just works. And it's the same weight. Been modified a few times now to our setup. Oh, you changed it? Yeah, yeah. Yep, this had just been set up, just put it back on last week for the Simo. What's this pipe for? So the, the pipe up there is for carrying fishing rods, um, or tent poles, um, sort of versatile either all. Do much fishing? Yeah, when we go to Fraser Island. Any good? Yes, always. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking fish here sometime. I don't know what I'm doing. You've got to go to suit the tides though, not to suit the time. Apparently there's loads of fish in WA. Is there? Just not when I go. 
I'll have to take him when I get over there. <laughs> which will be next year. Yeah? Yes. So this side's got the ARB awning. That's just on here specifically for, we've got a, um, an under awning tent, which when we all go in the car without our van, we sleep in both, both tents. Mm -hmm. um, but it's handy having one on both sides. That's a three by two and a half? That's a two and a half by two. It's got the Rhino under awning tent that just clips up under it, pegs to the ground. Fox wing on the other side. Max Trax holders on the roof, which we didn't need yesterday. No. We need a lot more than Max Trax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then in, in behind the Max Trax, we put two space cases, which the brackets are already there for it. And in the front, there's three jerry cans. You tow a van. Yes. When you do some touring yes. with a family. How much stuff do you throw on the roof? Do you throw extra jerrys of water, no. fuel, nothing? No. no. There's not much up there? Or? No, there's basically what you see now is all we have when we tow in the van. Lights and comms. Let's start with your lights. That don't work. That don't work? <laughs> Let's just pretend they work. No, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Two light bars? Yes. When they work? They're really good. They're really <laughs> They're just not wired up or? Uh, that one's not wired up because I only just put the roof rack on. This one I've got a, casing a little earthing gremlin problem. Ah, yes. Uh, so last gremlins. night we, I did have these working. Mm -hmm. So you're running on these at the moment and standard globes? No, they're upgraded globes as well. Um, but looking at maybe going to LED. Um, but they're just not cutting it really once you put the light bars on. How many watts are these? Um, there are t 10 watt bulbs, so 40 watts. Yeah, there's a lot of room in your bar really to put heaps of Air, antennas and aerial. Yeah, I've got enough. I'm going to put it after yesterday. I'm going to put a 2 dB one there because mm. I have got a separate radio that I'll put in the car. I got two. I'll have two. Yep. That's and then a good idea. 6 dB one there. Yeah, because through the hills, this was struggling. Six, it was, yeah. 6 dB, yeah. yeah. yeah it was noticeable. Mm. Yeah. Well, not hills, mountains. But mountains. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got to mount the sand flag on as well. Big V8, non intercooled. Turbo, Turbo. Oh. six and a half litre Chevy V8. How do you find it? Um, it runs real good. We've been playing around with it a little bit, changed a few different setups with the turbo. Currently really happy with the setup. You're just idling up hills in yeah. second gear? Yeah. And we're talking big hills, like second this. gear low. <laughs> like this at stages, mainly like this. Yeah, it, running a whole set HX 35 turbo. That's been purpose built for it. And also a custom standine injector pump. Three and a half inch and out half. of a custom stainless airbox. And then that's married into the iFlow Safari Snorkel. What comes out the back? The exhaust? Uh, it's full three inch all the way through. No muffler because it's not loud at all. And um, it gives that nice note. Yeah, it's got really nice in that note. Yeah, have a look at the intercooler setups, but haven't really needed to worry about that. Where would you put one? Um, your probably only option would be maybe a um, water to air one running across the back here. Um, but I haven't had a need for it with mm. engine temps running good and EGTs running really good and everything. Got the catch can on it as well. And only one battery under the bonnet because that's all you can fit. Just purely because that's all you can fit? Yes. And you got two in the back? Yes. So this is mainly crank, the other two are auxiliary? That's completely just for um, the crank and but also runs a winch. I'm we're running um, diff breathers and also running gearbox breather as well. Whereabouts are they? They're all up sitting up here. Ah right there. there. And then we've got the um, compressor up here for the lockers as well tucked away neatly in the corner. So you, you got air, ARB air lockers then? Um, we've got the TJM Pro lockers. Oh so you got the ARB compressor running the TJM lockers. Yes. All right. Bit of a mix and match but it all works really well. Guys. Get the uh, simple stuff out of the way first. Yep. These tyres, that was the maiden trip out for proper four driving with them yesterday. That was the maiden trip? Yeah, hadn't used them for wheeling before. Ah. They're only new. Very happy with them. That's why they're so chunky. Yep. That's why he made up the That's hill why so easy. Yeah. They're a 305, 70, 16. It equates to 30, 34. 34, 34 and a bit. Yep. That's bit. the maximum you're allowed to go to keep it all legal. They're on a, a 16 by 8 neck 20 rim and sits perfectly just inside the guard. That's a Dynamica? Yes. I think they've got the exact same rims. Yeah, quality. Kinda. They're a bit heavier than the cheaper ones, but they're just a lot stronger. Let's go to your driveline before we go to suspension then. Yep. So your driveline is not GQ, it's GU. It's a GU diff, the later model diff. And why do you guys do that? Is that because they're stronger? Because they bolt straight in. Um, so suspension-wise, arm-wise, everything, it all just bolts straight in. Um, but much bigger CVs. Um, is the it brakes, wider? It's wider, yeah. It's a wider track by about 60 mil. 
That's a fair bit. Like yeah. 60 mil overall. Yeah. yeah. 50 to 60 mil overall. And also running bigger brakes. The GUs come with the twin piston caliper front brakes. That makes a big difference. Don't the GUs come with um, automatic hubs yes. as well? So you yep. just change those to Yeah, manual. these are an aftermarket one. The genuine ones are better, but they're very hard to come by. Uh, so I went for an aftermarket one. So when you say bolt in, it's it's pretty simple. Like you can you just pull the G GQ out, put the GU in. Yeah. Yeah, I even took the diffs out of my GQ, the centers, and they bolt straight into the GU housings. Oh, the centers so as well. Same. Yeah, because they had so lockers the in them already. So the pumpkin size, everything's the same. It's exactly the same. So it's very about, common. What about the wheelbase like, length as well? The tail shaft and all that. Uh, it's all the same. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's a quite a common conversion to do, mm. rather than beefing up your GQ diffs. Suspension's a four-inch lift. Um, I'm running, trolled a few different setups over the years, but at the moment I'm running Gobertson's front springs, um, which were built to suit the weight of the car and everything else. So minus the body lift, it's a four inch suspension yes. lift? Yes. And then your body lift as well? Yeah, it's about an inch body lift. Just enough. It was basically not that I wanted to lift the body up to make it higher, I just needed it to clear the um, intake for the V8. That's the only reason why we did it. Oh, because of the engine mods? Yeah. All right, so the only other way would be to put a scoop on it, just for looks. Yes, so, on, so I'm running four inch um, Dobbinson springs on the front, and I'm running King's um, four inch on the rear, constant 750 kilo load. So you got King's on the rear because Dobbinson didn't make one heavy enough? No, or? just, um, yeah, I needed to go heavy. I had a Dobbinson's in there and it was fine, but we found once we bought the van, and I didn't want to run airbags, oh, so I towing. went to a, when I was towing, I just wasn't happy with where it was sitting. It was just sitting a little bit sagged okay. in the rear. We put the King's in, they worked perfect. And they still seem to work good enough for full driving and off-roading as well. The tie rods? Tie rods and drag link are all superior engineering. 4340 chrome molly, comp spec. And um, as are the panards. And that's where, and then that's pretty simple and from there it gets a bit more complicated. <laughs> all right. So what's the complicated so part? So the complicated part is with the radius arms, we're running a full um, custom built cross member on the gearbox. And we're running a long arm conversion which is completely different to your standard patrol setup. So what it technically does is it makes the actual pivot point of the, um, the radius arm, instead of being up here, it's all the way back here. So it gives oh, you, you move it that far back? Yeah, a lot more flex, but also a lot more better drivability on-road as well with the lift and everything. More stable, but off-road just gives you that a lot more flex because you're moving the pivot point of the suspension so yeah, far so further back. Yeah, a lot yeah. more gentle too? Yeah, really good to have that mix between touring, towing and also off-roading. All right, so for people watching, how far did you move? How far is that? Like 200 mil? 250? Uh, probably nearly 300 mil. Nearly a foot? Yeah. In the rear, the chassis has also been completely strengthened because um, that's a common fault. Also, oh, a cracking the... point? Yeah, patrols do have faults. <laughs> <laughs> They're not all perfect. It's a common thing with patrols when you load them up that the, um, the tower where the spring goes into the chassis, um, it cracks with it's excessive you're... weight loads okay. and everything. Because you're towing a van, you wanted to strengthen it up. Yeah, and even without towing vans, just people loading them up, rear bars, heavy weight in the back, it's quite mm. a common occurrence. So you just plate it? Um, so this has had full um, laser cut engineer plates all welded in to strengthen it completely, rather than having a bolt-on kit, which um, is a lot harder to do. And also on the rear, um, we've got adjustable upper arms to get all your pinion angles corrected on your drive shaft. And again on the rear, we've got the 300mm plus longer bottom arms as well, which you can have a look under here. So you brought both arms in? Yeah. So you can still see the hole where the original arm bolted in. Oh, yeah. And that's where the new arm bolts in. Yep, that's a foot. A good thong length. <laughs> <laughs> Best way to measure it. Yeah. And again, that, um, that makes a big difference when you're lifting them because it decreases the angle of that bottom arm. You see on a lot of lifted patrols with the short arms, that it's at an angle like that. Okay. Whereas this one's back further. And it's made it a lot more drivable. And on the rear, also running a, a superior engineering pan art on the back as well. Did you drive this with a different offset before? I did have a lesser offset, which is a lot better when you're yeah. driving on the sand or wet did, sand and everything. Did you find that now with a wider offset, it feels more stable? Massive difference. Yeah, that's what I find yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, it's probably borderline where the car gets a bit dirty when you're going through mud because it sort of flicks up a bit. Yeah. But you get it for the window. Small price to pay for the mm. extra traction, extra drivability. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And when you want to window down, you got mud in your face. Yeah. It looks get... cool. <laughs> Let's have a look. So the draw system basically starts from the back of the seats right through to the back of the car. Um, in here we've got little boxes. That's all the gear for the um, awnings, pegs and ropes and everything else which aren't all in there because we're using them at the moment. But they all go in there, easily accessible through the window. 
Um, in the center box, you've got all electrical for the draw system. So we've got all relays and fuses, and also there's a DC to DC charger in there. That's neat. And then on the other side is a toolbox with all the tools. Cool. Which we haven't needed on this trip. Yeah. Except for some spanners for a tail shaft. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath those boxes, you've got a, um, there's a twin battery setup, which we've got inside under here. It's very hard to see, but one, one side there's a battery with a compressor, and the other side there's a battery with um, a controller for the, um, the Red Arc um, switchover unit as well. Okay. And in the center underneath electrical is also a built-in subwoofer. Is there a joint here? Yes. So yeah, these boxes are removable for when you do have to replace the batteries. All right. Which isn't very often, it's a bit of a process, but batteries are in there for a long time, so that's all good. And they're all sealed and clamped in place and everything as well, sitting there very securely. And they're a fully sealed battery, so they can be run inside a car, unlike the lead acid ones, which is not yeah, recommended to run internally. Yeah. Yeah. Poison gas. Yes. <coughs> so the, the drawers in the back is a pretty basic setup with um, your two drawers. Um, one drawer is normally we use for food, which I haven't eaten much of on this trip because I've been provided food. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be taking a lot of food home with me. He also so cooked those good. banana pancakes. No. And I had enough for that. Mint. <laughs> and then the drawer on this side is all the cooking gear. So that's pretty well got everything in it, pots and pans and plates and a kettle, and then it's got a little extra pull-out table. Oh, wow. Didn't expect that. And that has seen a lot of fish filleted on Fraser Island. Doesn't smell like it now, but it has. <laughs> <laughs> and then while you're cooking there, you've got a little light here as well to see what you're doing. Mate, that is awesome. The beauty of this too is that you can access the fridge while you're cooking because the fridge pulls out over the top. Still got the prep table. Yeah. You still got your food drawer, so this is complete kitchen setup. Yeah. What do you normally store in here? Put clothes and stuff in there, but when we're towing the van, basically that's just for chairs, because everything else in the van, so it keeps it nice and lightweight. So the fridge is on a custom built slide. It's not a drop down, because we didn't have room for it. Mm -hmm. um, and you just have to reach up into it. And it's a 50 litre National Luna. And I just realized it's still got your beers in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I better give them to you before we head off today. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> nice. Beautiful fridge, works really well, really happy with it. So we spoke earlier about recovery gear. Yes. How you want it sort of easy accessible, because usually when you need it, you're either like this or you're like yes. that, and yes. it's so hard to get to, and yes. we've all been in that situation. Yep. So and what's your solution? Well, a lot of people put them in the drawers. One, we wanted to put food in the drawers. Two, the patrols have got the beautiful window on the side, mm. which on mine aren't rusty, but a lot of them are. That's a good thing. And uh, so I decided to build a little extra compartment on the side, and that's where we keep all the recovery gear. So whether you get it through the back door, you can reach it through the side window, or from the back seat, it's all accessible. Oh, that's, that's pretty clever. That's a good tip there. Easy to get to, and everything's in there. There's a winch recovery strap, snatch strap, yeah. um, tree trunk protector, lots of shackles, probably too many shackles. Well, let's take last night, for instance, yep. trying to get to Torben's recovery bag when he was on that angle, that was a bit of a mission. It was, and especially because we needed to get to the other side of the car to get the winch extension, but we yeah. got the snatch strap instead, yeah. Yep, which we couldn't get until we got them on the other side. On the other side, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spare fluids. Um, there's also there's USB and, uh, um, USB and um, normal cigarette lighter outlets. Mm -hmm. um, what was that, your filleting knife there? And there's a filleting knife as well. On this side, I built it so that we can still use the standard place where the jack goes rather than having a jack rattling around somewhere so that's where the jack goes in there and that's why the drawers were cut out to be able to still access the jack because even with big tires it's still handy to stand a jack to jack it up works really well as opposed to a high lift yeah fair enough and, and then we've got and down here you can put your phone if you're charging it right yes so phone that's kind of like a little phone pocket nook. there to put everything yeah mm. and then the switches are there for the fridge and for the lights um, and that as well the whole draw system runs on a standalone system, basically separate to the car. Except wow. for the charging. I'm surprised it crashed through this so quick. There's so much here. It's just, it's just very simple and, and very practical. I've built a lot of drawers though. <laughs> How many modifications have you done to get to this point? Um, five cars. Five cars? Yeah. Started with a Pajero. Takes a while. A few patrols mm. and then this one. And I've built a few drawers for other people but because I built this whole thing myself. But I made it so that it bolted in very easily. All comes out in pieces. Very good. Cab time. Where should we start? Where should we start? Um, wherever you want to start. Let's start up start here. Up there. We've added that to it. So we're running a second um, 
temperature gauge for the water temperature. The V8s are known to have a little problem with um, getting hot at the back of the heads, so we've done modifications to the motor, as well as just keeping a second gauge at the back of the heads in the V8 just to keep an eye on the water temperature. Then you've got your um, exhaust temperature, which is imperative when you're running a turbo mm -hmm. for EGTs. And then we've got, we run two um, oil pressure, one there and then a standard one as well. What EGTs do you normally sit on? Last night when we got top of the hill, I was under 300. Really what we've done is we've left the clock, mm -hmm. um, but where there was a cigarette lighter, we've put the boost gauge in here. We've just got the, um, the, the audio player and then the CB radio, the UHF. What boost do you It's run? off the gauge at the moment with the new turbo, so I've actually got to put a different one in. Ah, so you can read it. <laughs> yeah, well, with the previous turbo, we were lucky to get eight, eight or nine pound, whereas this one here is running probably about 20 pound, and it's only a 15 pound gauge. Oh, yeah, I understand. So many yep. times up the hill last night, it was at the limit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wanting to go further. <laughs> smashing the end there. Switches for all the light bars. That switches for the rock lights. With the compressor switch for the lockers is up here. I've just kept it separate so you don't chance over hitting the switches or mm -hmm. by bumping them. Compressor for the lockers is there. And then we've got front and rear locker switches here. Next to that, we've got a kill switch for the winch. So that when that's down, the winch is off. Mm -hmm. um, up and deflect the winch on. And then we've got your in-cab winch control there, forward and backwards. That's pretty cool. Can you override it with putting something on it? No, it's all hardwired in, so it's got to be through here. But after seeing someone else's winch with the remote control, I really liked that last <laughs> night. <laughs> I'm also running the Mark's 4 drive adapter speedo correction unit. Oh, because, that's what it is? Yeah, so when you change diff ratios and when you change tyre sizes, you can actually reprogram it to get your speedo working back to standard, hmm. which I had to do for the engineering. This vehicle here is fully engineered? It's 100% engineered in New South Wales. Nice. Plugs you put here? Running extra plugs there as well with a, with a um, separate switch cut off so you can actually isolate them. Navigation is VMS. Yeah, VMS. Worked pretty well last night. Have you tried HEMA? I want a HEMA. You want a HEMA? I'm what? saving up for a HEMA. Why do you want a HEMA? Because <laughs> um, having had a HEMA before, but it was a faulty screen, um, but doing a lot of research on them, they just seem to do the tracks a lot better. They've got a lot more stuff on them. They got the better maps. And, and looking at your but maps yesterday, that's awesome. Red Arc Tow Pro for when we're towing, um, works really well. Apart from that, it's pretty standard. We do have some outlets on the back here for the girls. And they are wanting a drop down DVD player on the roof, but they're not going to get it. <laughs> Let's talk about drop down DVD players. Have you got kids? It seems like a great idea, but when you're having trouble with them, yep. nothing but trouble. You're trying to drive and they're whinging about not working or the audio doesn't work, the headphones run out of batteries, don't do it. Don't do it, it's not worth it. You're camping. Yep. What we've done on, on our long trips, we've created games. So we'll play, we'll play trivia, we'll play, we play a game called cricket, which is, well, which is okay when you're on the highway when you're seeing other cars. So you've got to count cars, but every time there's a car towing or a semi-trailer, you're out and that's the next person's going to see if you can get the highest score. Ah. That's a pretty cool game, but it's no good when you're going bush like yesterday we yeah. saw no cars. <laughs> yeah. But you play I Spy, you play Trivia, and you just keep them occupied with other things. Yep. Always find so many people posting about what to do with kids, you just got to play with them. Have fun with them and create things where they've got to use their brain, that's really good. That's a great idea. And the other thing, what we all used to have to do, all we got to do was look out the window. Yeah. You know, Remember or mum and dad drive around. <laughs> Boring as hell. <laughs> I couldn't read, I get car sick, so I always had to look out the window. I couldn't read a book. So I did a lot of looking out the window when I was little. Toughen up, kids. Toughen up, deal with it, get off your screens. Q&A. What are you actually using for camping here? So you've got an Oz10 RV2 tag-along tent. Yeah, that's a tag-along. So it can't be set up on its own, it needs to be attached to something. Um, generally to the RV tents but also or adaptable an to the fox wing or an awning. Yeah. So when you have the family yes. and you don't tow the van, yep. you use this? We and... use that and we also use the, the one on the other side because it's two and a half by two metre. you got and... two tag-along tents or you got a wall? No, that's it? a tag-along and then that's the under awning one. So it's a big square um, rhino rack one and it just clips up to under your awning on your bar and clips up on your bar on the car. Uh -huh. Takes two seconds to set up. Like a tag-along tent? Yes, that's all. Similar. Yeah, similar. Four clips on the top, four pegs on the bottom, and then just blow up in beautiful queen size, fluffy velour top air mattress. <laughs> queen size mattress with a big doona. <laughs> oh wow! 
<laughs> Does it take long to set up? Oh, it's a little bit fidgety, but it's not too bad. Yeah. Because yeah. normally when we sleep with all of us in the car set up, we've got that, and then under the other side, we've got the um, the Rhino one. It drops under the awning, and that okay. sleeps all five of us. Nice. Very comfy. So there's a tag along tent. <coughs> and generally, we just share between the two, having the three kids. Oh, yeah. Mum sleeps in the bigger one, Dad sleeps in the little one. <laughs> yeah. And you just split the kids? Yeah, split the kids. What are your top three favourite mods to this vehicle? Not not ones that you absolutely must have, but like your top favourite. Top favourite mods would be probably the ones that most people would have. It would be a decent set of tyres. Um, especially after last night, one of the imperative mods, apart from all the massive suspension work, would be lockers and having a winch if you want to do the sort of stuff that we did last night. Definitely lockers. Definitely lockers. And just definitely a... winch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but last night just having the lockers, you just see it makes such a difference. Yeah. Even your truck, the way it went up. Mm. Um, and, then, and then coming through with the rest of them, yeah, it was a massive difference. Just feel, you feel safer. Mm. Oh, it was good fun, eh? Yeah. What's the most underrated modification or change on your GQ Patrol? The most underrated, like people look at it and not realise that, hey. Probably the GU diffs because it's not something you really notice except for the wider wheel track. But just knowing you've got bigger bigger CVs, bigger brakes, especially when you're towing, even when, even without towing, you're carrying a lot of extra weight. Um, just a really good mod, and it's actually not that expensive to do. What is your favorite trip so far in this vehicle? Favorite trip so far? No other trip but Ronnie's trip. The last two days, had an absolute ball. <laughs> <laughs> Miss the family, but it's good to go. I do a boys' trips away occasionally, but this, this is one just been had, a, had an awesome time. And we've done longer trips in the van. Um, one of the favourite spots is probably Fraser, like most people. Love going up there, but love exploring the Coast Coast. So favourite place in Queensland, would that be Fraser? Yeah. Favourite place in New South Wales? Pebbly Beach. Yeah? <laughs> right here? <laughs> right here. We come here 12 times a year pretty well. Your top camping modification, or your top camping gear? Let's, let's go three. Three, um, three bits of gear. Three bits of gear? Yeah, stuff you like to tell people about. My National Lunar Fridge. That's one. Probably the other, the other favourite bit of camera gear at the moment is our new van that we got last year. That was two Caravan. years in the making of development and everything else and taking it to another level. And probably the other camp gear, bit of camping gear that we've recently purchased after bagging out people for many years cooking in camp ovens, we have upgraded to a, a Weber Q. Uh, <laughs> the Weber Q. Love the camp oven, but it has taken it to another level with yeah. cooking and biscuits and everything else. And it is easier. Yeah. But yeah. doing what we did the other night, still the best thing is still camp oven. Yeah, even though it's it just took, beautiful. What, four hours, three That's hours. Right. <laughs> a few beers later, it's all good. <laughs> That's it. The laws for modifying a vehicle in New South Wales are yep. different than Queensland. Are yes. different than definitely different than WA. Are they? And other yeah, oh yeah, WA can't do anything. Yeah. Legal. <laughs> um, <laughs> so how did, is it hard to get this engineered? It, sometimes it's. It, People make it sound harder than what it really is. What I did was prior to doing the modifications, um, outside of the motor, which was already partly done when I bought the car, I actually consulted an engineer and worked with him through the build. Mm. Um, so when we actually came to doing the actual final testing of, of, the, of the vehicle and do the proper engineering, it pretty well went straight through. Because we talked to him about what we were doing, checked that it was legal and all that sort of mm. stuff. All the um, suspension stuff being mostly from Superior came with receipts and their part numbers, which was all put on the engineering report as well. Interesting. Um, the welding was all done by a certified person. Then we just kept within the restraints of what they have. So you can go X amount of lift over standard in the lift, X amount of tie width over standard. So it was all kept within that. Which is why you have this, I would call it a strange size tire. Yeah. With the, yeah. With the figures, yeah. well, not strange, but. It, well, we couldn't go 35. It, it, people think they can get them in, in New South Wales engineer with the 35, any patrol, you're not going to get it done. Mm. It's too far over the standard, even on the GUs. So we stuck to this tire here because that was just within the confines of what you're allowed over the standard size. That's really interesting to know. Yeah, a lot of research gone into it. GQ patrol, worst thing about it? It's an older car. You are always chasing little gremlins. As we discovered on this last trip, I've got a little problem with power steering leaking. Oh yeah, he was using um, motor oil and that. Motor oil to keep it going because I wanted to keep driving. Yeah. And, and it's a good car, but it is a 20, 20 something year old car. Yeah. So you've got little squeaks in the doors and that sort of thing, but you mm. just learn to live with it. Best thing? Um, best mod, mm. the V8. I oh, know, oh, <laughs> best thing about it. Just best thing about it. Best thing about it is we just love it. It's reliable, it goes anywhere. Um, my wife loves driving it because it's actually her car, not mine. Um, so it's a drivable car. 
it's an everyday driver for her with the kids going to school and everything. And we can put a caravan on and tow it around Australia and we can do what we did last night in it. So it's an all-rounder. Future mods, what's maybe, the next thing? Maybe an intercooler. We are and are also looking at running different injectors to just taste that little bit more power and a little bit better fuel economy. Um, and we're looking at another swing away on the back just to carry water. Which we spoke about before. Yeah, we spoke before for doing the desert, yep. Now, I was trying to class this vehicle, put it into like a class of like a budget build or something like that. It's definitely not a budget build. This is a, this is a really well car enthusiast modified toy tourer vehicle. Yeah. It's really a nice hybrid. It, um, we, we built it keeping the cost down, obviously having mates in the industry and mm. a good mechanic friend whose workshop was used for a lot of it and that sort of thing, and the fact we bought it with the conversion half done quite cheaply. But we both, the car would basically, as it sits here, would be worth what a conversion would cost with everything mm. that's on it. Yeah, that's the thing. You, when you pour money into your vehicles, don't expect to get that back. Get it back. You're never going to get it back. What was your previous vehicles? Um, the previous five were all patrols. All GQs? Um, all GQs. All, all of them? All TD42s. What's the most vulnerable thing about a GQ patrol? So let's just take one from standard because you've owned what five or six yep. or something like that. What is the most common three issues that happen with <clears> these, and what is the most common things you should look out for if you go buy them? Um, most common things with with the um, patrols, not so much mechanically, but is the rust. They're very well known to rust in the roof, along um, the gutter, which yeah, above the gutters. So and the windows on the back. The windows rust, but also the actual gutters. So above the gutter on the roof. Um, you, when you're buying them, quite often you can see whether they've been repaired or not. And if they've been repaired, usually they're really bad. Mm. So the rust would be completely around the whole roof. It was probably something to do with manufacturing that wasn't painted properly or something like that. Um, and they rust in the firewalls as well. In the firewalls? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. In yeah, that, they get that, rust that, in, they the, got in the fold in the metal. they got a lip inside. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that's quite common as well. Anything else? Um, earlier models had issues with... Um, the chassis where the um, panard bolts on near the power steering that they cracked and there's a kit you can buy for that but the later models that was mm. all sorted out. Final question, would you recommend a GQ patrol to say someone who's just got into full driving or wants to you know learn about vehicles? I would yeah, definitely, they're a good car to drive, easy car to drive, cheap to buy and they're, they're quite cheap to maintain. And quite easy to learn on because they're basic. Quite easy to learn, to work on and everything as well yeah because mm. everything's very basic. All right. Thank you very much, Danny. No worries. Thank you. And cheers for cooking those banana pancakes and showing us around in Coffs Harbour and all that. No problems. Loved it. Had a ball. So we'll have you to guys a, did too. Yeah, cheers, man. We'll have to put a link to that video down here. And um, if you, you want to know more about Danny's um, GQ Patrol with a lot of GU stuff on it, there's a link up in the corner there. So thank you very much for watching. So where should we put the subscribe button? Subscribe button, bottom corner, right hand side. All right. right down about, about there. All right. There's yeah. another modified video down here with another GQ in it and patreon.com slash Ronnie Dale up here if you'd like to support the creation of content like this. Cheers. Cheers. Thank Cheers, you. Cheers, mate. Cheers.